I was wrong. I was 100% wrong. Episode 3 pulled it right back on track, and Episode 4 was very good. So, I will admit that I was wrong when I claimed this show was incredibly boring, and I took some real shots at it that I probably shouldn't have, and that's because I prematurely judged the entire season based on my disappointment with Episode 2. What's up, geeks and gamers? It's Jeremy coming to you with another video, and today we're talking about The Mandalorian because The Mandalorian is doing a lot of interesting things right now within the Star Wars universe and then beyond the Star Wars universe in terms of the fandom and what it's exposing within the fandom. So let's talk about this Season 2 journey that I've been on really quickly because I have not covered this show consistently since Season 2 began, and there are some reasons for that. Number one... I wasn't overly excited going into Season 2. That's not to say I didn't enjoy Season 1, because I did enjoy Season 1. I felt it was safe in a lot of ways, and safe is not bad, especially where Star Wars has been in terms of the big screen and what's happened with the fandom. Safe was a good thing. It got us back to basics, and it got us back to Star Wars, and I very much appreciated that out of Season 1. It had issues, and I'm not saying it didn't. It definitely had issues, but it was safe, and it was enjoyable enough. But moving in to the next season, I just didn't have a lot of enthusiasm. Then we fall into episode one, and episode one was actually really good. I enjoyed it. I didn't watch it when it premiered, I don't believe. I can't remember exactly when I watched it, but episode one was really good. And I said, okay, we're off to a good start. Then we got to episode two. And I'm not really sure if I'm, uh, you know, on the popular side of this opinion or not. I hated episode two. I thought episode two was terrible. It was just incredibly boring. It's not that it did anything offensively bad as much as it was just really boring. And I felt like episode one was a good setup and you really needed to take us to the next level with episode two. And it just didn't happen. And I really saw my enthusiasm for this season drop quickly with episode two and it made me doubt the future of uh, this series and this season because I felt like we had a lot of momentum coming off uh, uh, season one episode one was a, a solid start to season two and then episode two just it just was irrelevant and terrible and boring in my opinion so then we had the whole thing with me and Pedro Pascal, and I'm saying Pedro uh, the way that he wants to make fun of me saying his name. So obviously I made a video about Pedro Pascal going after Donald Trump supporters and calling them, you know, Yahtzees and racist and all these other things. The meme that he posted that he eventually deleted. I made a video on that calling him out, and then he responded to my uh, or our tweet on Geeks and Gamers, so then I did a live stream while I'm live streaming saying I would have a conversation with this guy, a, a respectful conversation. He then starts to make fun of how I was saying his name. All of that happened, and so I talked about how this entire series is boring. Obviously, I went a little overboard on that, but I was coming off of episode two, and I was really unhappy with episode two. Um, then we move into episode three, and I eventually watched episode three, and episode three was great. And episode three felt like a Clone Wars episode, and I really appreciated everything that episode three was doing, and it pulled me back in, and I was able to separate whatever happened with Pedro Pascal and myself. I don't really care about these things. I don't need actors to agree with me. Um, that's not really anything I've ever worried about. And then we go into episode four, which premiered last night. And episode four was really good. A lot of people seem to, I think people love it more than I do, but I did enjoy it. It was a good episode, a very good episode. I still preferred episode three of this season over four, but it was still a very good episode. Um, and then we had, obviously, we had Cara Dune return, Gina Carano. We had Carl Weathers starring and acting in this episode. Baby Yoda was as cute as ever, and I, I'm a fan of Baby Yoda. I know there's an anti-Baby Yoda crowd out there. I'm not part of that, never have been. I think Baby Yoda's great. Um, Mando is still the most boring part of this series, and I'm not saying that as anything against Pedro Pascal. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't hate Mando. I think Mando's fine, but uh, Ryan Kennel said it best where he said that he needs another character to help elevate him in the episodes he's in. So the good episodes we have are, are generally one where Mando has someone else that he can feed off of or Baby Yoda carries it. Um, that's kind of where we're at with this uh, series up to this point. I'm enjoying it, but there's a bigger picture that I want to discuss. 
and that is how the Mandalorian is absolutely exposing the nonsensical crowd that Lucasfilm has spent the last several years pandering to. And I have been battling that crowd on this channel nonstop. These people will never be satisfied. No matter what you do, no matter how much you pander, no matter how much you try, no matter how much you bend over backwards, they will never be satisfied. It doesn't matter. And I've been telling you that for years, these weirdos will never be satisfied. Raylos are weird, okay? Solo lost money, Raylos are weird, and this group of people will never be satisfied. Look at the episode we just had. What did we have? We had it directed by a black man, starring a black man and a badass woman. And they're still mad, because... Gina Carano doesn't agree with their politics because as I always say with social justice weirdos, they are only interested in your race and gender when they can build a narrative around it. When they can't build a narrative around your race and gender, they will cast you out because they are the truest and isms. They are the true bigots. They are the true people that want to hate on you based on solely your race and gender or then use your race and gender for their political narrative and we're seeing a classic example of that we have heard that we need representation we need representation in Star Wars well you just got it you just got representation you just got a black dude directing a really good episode of Star Wars and he starred in it and Gina Carano was there and she was as badass as ever in that episode and guess what none of them are happy because they're never gonna be happy because this group of weirdos they're always playing the victim. It's called the Oppression Olympics. Anybody that's, that's obsessed with identity politics is someone that you can almost bet your ass is a racist and a sexist because they define people specifically on race and gender and the political narrative that can be built around them. Not only that, but now, now guess what? It's rumored that Rosario Dawson will be playing the role of Ahsoka Tano in episode 5, directed by Dave Filoni. Again, I'm a fan of Dave Filoni. I understand there's a lot of anti-Dave Filoni people out there, and that's perfectly fine. I'm not one of them, and you're never going to make me become one of them. But here's the bigger story right here. The news that Rosario Dawson could potentially be in next week's episode. Guess what the mainstream's doing? Guess what the mainstream's doing? First of all, they're highlighting what happened with Gina Carano. The Mandalorian actor has made dismissive remarks about trans pronouns and shared unproven theories about the presidential election results and the COVID mask mandates. Um, she has not done any of that. Um, she, well, she has not, she has not made any remarks about trans pronouns. She just simply, she just simply didn't want to put pronouns in her bio, so they get mad at her. Then she trolls them. She's also posted memes. She's posted memes about election results and masks, but memes are not allowed. Also, look what else. Look what else they're doing. Unconfirmed rumors suggest Rosario Dawson may appear in this season. Fans have raised alarms about a lawsuit accusing her of anti-trans bias. However, 18 of 20 charges against her, including claims of misgendering and discrimination, were voluntarily uh, withdrawn by the plaintiff. Why are they bringing this up? Rosario Dawson is a woman of color the their favorite thing in the world right and and she's like dating or married to Cory Booker uh democrat and it's not enough it's never going to be enough so now they're just prepping for the anti Rosario Dawson narrative so here you have it you have a black dude directing this episode you have a black dude starring this episode. You have a woman starring in this episode being a badass, beating the hell out of everybody because Gina Carano is a legitimate badass. You have Rosario Dawson, a woman of color. And I'm not, I don't use that terminology. That's what the mainstream and the weirdos on Twitter say as. Um, Rosario Dawson's a woman. That's all she is. She's, she's just a woman. She's a good looking woman. She was in Clerks too, one of my favorite movies of all time. I never looked at it and says, well, Rosario Dawson is, uh, she's in one of my favorite movies because she plays a woman of color and there's a, a good amount of representation and it really, it really affects me. It really affects me deeply. 
And I'm so proud. I'm so proud of this community. I don't do that. I don't care what she is, her color, whatever. It doesn't matter. She's just a female and she did a great job in the role. But here you have her fitting your social justice talking points and you're still not happy because of some unproven accusations because you found someone else that you can oppress more than Rosario Dawson. This is the group of people. This is the nonsensical narrative that Lucasfilm has been chasing. The force is female, everybody. We need more representation, everybody. And then you got your representation and now you're finding more reasons to then throw them under the bus. Now you're throwing Rosario Dawson and Gina Carano under the bus. Two women, two badass women, two respectable actors that are good at what they do. And because they don't fit your political narrative, you found someone else that you can oppress more. So now you're throwing them under the bus because apparently the force isn't female anymore because social justice never has an end sight. It's an endless rabbit hole of victimization and nonsense. Rosario Dawson with unproven claims does not deserve this. Gina Carano does not deserve this because she won't bend the knee to the mob. But that's what's happening in Lucasfilm because this is what Kathleen Kennedy has created. You now have a good show that is making the fans generally happy, but because you have pandered to this weird group of people, now they're attacking the actors for things that have nothing to do with the show. Congratulations, Lucasfilm, congratulations, Kathleen Kennedy, Bob Iger, J.J. Abrams, and Ryan Johnson. Now, the women that are being elevated on your show are being attacked by this weirdo, nonsensical group of people that you have been obsessed with pandering to. And I was right, just like I was always right. They're never going to be happy, they will never be satisfied, and they will eat each other alive. And that's exactly what's happening right now. But to pull it all the way back in, I do enjoy The Mandalorian. I did have some issues after episode two, um, and I was very dismissive of the show based on that because I felt the show was moving in the wrong direction after episode two. I was wrong. I was 100% wrong. Episode three pulled it right back on track, and episode four was very good. So I will admit that I was wrong when I claimed this show was incredibly boring, and I took some real shots at it that I probably shouldn't have. And that's because I prematurely judged the entire season based on my disappointment with episode two. Looking forward to the rest of the season. Looking forward to episode five. We'll see how it all plays out. But one thing we can be certain of, these weirdos, these social justice weirdos will never be happy no matter what Lucasfilm does. And Lucasfilm, not Gina Carano, not Rosario Dawson, not Carl Weathers, but Lucasfilm and the leadership at Disney deserve this situation they have found themselves in. And I don't feel sorry for any of them. So, you guys have a great day. Thank you very much for checking out this video. Solo lost money. Raylos are weird. The Mandalorian's pretty good. And we will talk to you later.